Yes, yeah, so I can see the first slide. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, a very good evening to everyone who is present in this session. Uh, so, my name is Lalit Kumar Gunasegran. And today I'm going to uh, give a quick brief about uh, what is explainable AI. So over the next one hour, uh, we'll be uh, talking a lot about explainable AI and its contents. So just before I uh, start with the session, uh, let me give a quick uh, brief about myself. So uh, I have a total of around 15 plus years of uh, experience in automotive industry. And this includes uh, in various domains uh, with my experience starting in uh, various fields of quality, including manufacturing quality at different uh, manufacturing plants, automotive manufacturing plants, and also uh, assembly quality, and then later uh, customer quality and warranty domains. I've been in after sales for quite some period. And post that, I've also worked as a statistician for a few years. And finally, uh, my latest role for the last three years is I'm the chapter lead for data science, uh, leading a, a team of uh, 20 plus data scientists. So this is my overall experience uh, for your information. So uh, quickly moving on. Uh, so this is the agenda and this is what we would be talking about for the next maybe 45 minutes. And uh, to start with, we would be looking at what is explainable AI. And then uh, secondly, we would also be discussing on the business benefits it has. And we would be talking about uh, the different approaches that are uh, the different classifications that are available in uh, explainable AI. And uh, fourthly, we would be discussing uh, scope of explainable AI in Python R and the uh, possible options that are available in cloud. And finally, I would give you detailed explanation of two um, very um, uh, frequently used methods of explainable AI, which include Lime and Sharp. And I'll also show you quite a few demonstrations uh, uh, with various data sets that I have. So this is the quick agenda. So with this context in place, uh, let me now quickly move on to the explainable AI. So, First of all, before I uh, tell you what is explainable AI, uh, let us just have a look at this example. So let us specifically consider that there is a person called John and he's a heart patient and he has done some tests so in the hospital and based on the tests that he has done, uh, there's an AI model that is available and the AI model is concluding that John is having stroke. So with, when it was announced that John is having a stroke, John was pretty worried and now he's asking uh, the customer care office, officer or whoever uh, he has informed that how, how is that you're concluding that I'm having stroke. So when this question is put into the customer care officer, he in turn puts back this question to the data scientist who, act, who had actually developed the AI model. And the answer that data scientist gives is, it is AI magic. And do you guys think that this answer can be actually given to John stating that this is because of AI magic? No. Definitely no. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for that answer. So exactly no, because it is such a very important uh, criteria where the hospital decides whether the patient, uh, the so-called patient is having stroke or not. Or not. And this cannot be explained by a simple answer called that this is what my AI model is giving. So no one will get convinced, including us. So with this context in place, it is very, very important. We need to understand why a model is uh, predicting that John is having stroke. So uh, this is a very simple um, uh, matrix. You, As you all know, the simpler, the simpler the models that we develop, usually they are very easily interpretable. But the problem is they may not be very accurate. On the contrary side, um, the complex models that we developed are usually accurate. But the only problem is that they may not be interpretable. So you uh, generally we call such models as black box models. 
So it will not be possible to uh, tell uh, why the model is predicting in such a manner, which is uh, uh, for which we saw already a classic example in the previous slide. Okay. So now with this context in place, so let us see what is explainable A. So explainable A can be defined in multiple ways. So the most predominantly used way is it is a branch of responsible A where A systems are made to explain the reasoning behind. So it is basically you should be able to, the model should be able to tell why the model predicted in a certain specific way. Again, pointing back to the example, the example saw why John was considered as a stroke patient, that specific reason the model should be able to tell, or I mean, the model will not be able to tell. I mean, at least the data scientist who has uh, developed that specific model, he should be able to understand why the model was able to predict in such a manner. So a quick uh, depiction of the full circle of AA with explain, explanation. So this is how typically we operate. So we have the, the world and uh, we capture different types of data. With different types of data, we train a model. Pretty much we can call it as a black box model because most of the models that we design, I'm not very sure we would be able to interpret. And with help of this explainable AI technique, we should be able to interpret and the interpretation along with the justification, we should be able to give back to the end user or human who would further use it for whatever purpose the model was designed to. So this is the importance of explainable AI. So usually all along we've been building models and uh, uh, deploying them with uh, help of which people were uh, doing some interpretations, but it is also important that we also give the interpretation of the model if someone asks a question of why the specific model has um, is behaving in such a way or giving some predictions in, in such a way, we should be in a position to explain this is what the model has considered and this is why it has given this specific prediction. prediction. So coming to the business benefits, so the business benefits are again multifold. One is you can optimize your models. So if you are able to understand the model in a better manner, you will be again able to optimize the model. You can improve the model performance and you can also improve your decision making. Again, the second thing is in terms of retention. So you will be able to have better control over your model. And also it would be safe because you would be able to understand your model better. And the third one is much more important because nowadays we are talking about ethical AI and there are a lot of debates that are going on. Even people are uh, questioning whether, first of all, is AI ethical? And uh, of course, most of you would be knowing with uh, chat GPT now into place, the debates have increased multifold, of course. So whatever we do, it is very important that we build this trust for the clients or for the users. So you can only build a trust when you can build a trustable model. First of all, you should believe the model and then with the help of the model, you should be able to convince for whom, whoever you build the model. So trust and ethics are very, very important. And finally, with respect to compliance. So again, uh, you'll only be able to, uh, you will be, uh, you will have to be accountable and uh, with respect to compliance nowadays, it is also, uh, it is going to be a regulatory factor that uh, uh, in terms of compliance, you'll have to explain the model, so, but th these things are not going to be too far. So these are the business uh, benefits. So now uh, let us move on to the different approaches uh, in uh, explainable AI, sorry. So first of all, uh, there can be two approaches in explainable AI. One is anti hoc approach, or another one is post hoc approach. So anti hoc approach is not very frequently used approach. So it is an approach where you can actually implement explainability starting from the, uh, the building phase of the model. So uh, right from starting, you can actually uh, try to um, uh, build explainability. This, this, as I already told, it is not a very frequently used method. It is very, very rare. 
this is where you actually choose the suppose you have designed you, you plan to do a poc or a project you carefully choose only those features where you will only um, you, you will try to uh, see those will be contributing to the model very specifically and the post hoc approach is where probably most of us would be uh, fitting into so uh, in post hoc approach the probably already a trained model is available or the model is trained with whatever data set that is available and based on the model now we are trying to interpret the model uh, on how it is trying to give the predictions so this is basically Uh, similar to a post mortem approach wherein already a model is available and you are trying to um, um, understand or interpret the model so uh, there are uh, techniques available for both of these so uh, primarily i will be explained uh, explaining only the post hoc approach going forward so we will be seeing uh, in detail at least these two approaches uh, specifically lime and shap okay so moving on we can also classify explainable ai based on some other methods so here based on agnosticity we can classify it as model agnostic or model specific model agnostic is you will be able to build explanation for any specific model so be it any model be it your traditional uh, traditional machine learning methods or deep learning or be it any uh, specific model pre trained model you will be able to do the interpret interpretations using explainable ai if it's model specific those methods will only be applicable for some specific uh, models like uh, decision trees uh, like uh, your ensemble methods etc so the, those will be specifically for um, uh, sp uh, some kind of models and you cannot apply those methods for all the models and again based on scope again you can classify into two different types one is global explanation another another is local explanation for global explanation it is more of you will be able to get an explanation of the model as a whole suppose say you have a model in place this specific model what are all the important features that are contributing to this model what are all the less important features as a A whole, a whole for a whole model you can do the explanation for a local explanation means you can explain to specific data point of your prediction suppose uh, again going back to the john's example it belongs to the local explanation because john is one specific data point as an output of that specific model so if you'd like to understand why it has uh, um, predicted that john has stroke it is a prediction for one specific data point so why it has predicted a stroke for that specific data point that level of explanation it is possible to do using local explanation and quickly moving on so explainable ai can be implemented for almost all type of data sets be it your uh, simple tabular data sets it could be your text or speech it could be uh, applicable for image or video i would again show you examples of all of these except graph so even for graph you can do the explanations and finally uh, the last type of classification is um, uh, based on the explanation type so your explanation type can be visual it can be of feature importance it can be based on the data points and finally um, it can be based on surrogate models surrogate models are nothing but simpler models simpler linear models um uh, so this is one thing that you would uh, be understanding more when i am explaining the lime uh, method okay so now uh, let me quickly uh, show you um uh, the different packages that are available uh, in the market so with respect to python there is a whole list of packages i'll not go through each one of them so uh, primarily uh, lime and shape are the uh, most commonly used the same lime and shape are also available as part of our uh, with uh, uh, also in addition to the other uh, packages that we have and with respect to cloud you have uh, inbuilt uh, uh, explainable ai features for gcp aws as well as for microsoft azure 
with respect to gcp mostly it uses uh, shapely method uh, which is uh, which is nothing but the shap and also integrated gradient method and xra method and the, also there is a tool that is available called as what if tool to investigate uh, model performances with aws it uses only model agnostic feature attribution method which is actually good because it work for all the models and finally it uses shapely values which is nothing but the shape and again again with respect to microsoft azure it uses both model specific and model agnostic and here also the shape is the primary explainer that is being used there are also a couple of more explainer explainers so uh, overall you have open source la open source uh, libraries that are available to do the explanation you also have paid so those available as part of the uh, cloud platforms are of course play, paid so finally let us come and look in uh, uh, quite uh, quite a few details about two most frequently used methods one is line and the other one is shape okay so let us have a look at uh, lime so first of all lime is nothing uh, nothing but um, local interpretable model agnostic explanations so the word l stands for local explanation so this will give local exp explanations to the specific data point whatever you would like to understand on the prediction side and second is interpretable of course we are doing interpretable ai uh, the other way we can also call a, uh, we used to call explainable ai and m stands for model agnostic so this can be used for any model it is not pertaining to any specific model it will work for all the models including uh, any models that you build for text image or tabular data so it can work for anything and finally it will give, give explanations it will produce some specific artifacts which will provide an understanding and it will try to connect what was your input data to the prediction so this will be much more clear when i show you the examples so uh, a simple concept here is instead of building a global global model when i tell global model uh, an explanation for the complete model it focuses again on a uh, your local surrogate models so, so surrogate models are simpler models mostly linear models on which you will be able to explain the model in a better way so you will understand in the next few slides what i am talking about okay so uh, again let us go back and stick to the same example of where john is having uh, for john the model is predicting he is having stroke so let us consider uh, this specific model this is a very complex complex model you can see there is no uh, it, the, there is no any linear line which can separate the data points of stroke and no stroke so these uh, points which fall in the whiter region are data points of uh, stroke and these points which fall in the blue shadow those are uh, data points or patients with no stroke so if you look at the differentiation it is a very complicated uh, uh, a line which uh, differentiates strokes and non stroke po portions it is uh, it is a very very complicated thing so now specifically this pink color point is a point of john okay so how this specific line uh, works is sir uh, sorry to interrupt you but uh, the screen is not visible my i mean we are only seeing the slides okay uh, is it uh, is it same for everyone no we can see the slide this is fine yeah see the slide only i, I yeah, i'm yeah. explaining so, with the slides only uh, yeah, yeah we no, can no. see the slide if you are showing some other window then uh, they are not able to see Slide no, no, I am I am only showing these slides. So. Okay, okay, then it is no, fine. We can pink, see the slide. Pink point, you are saying that there is no point. Like for me, it's not. No, 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 the pink color point I am referring to this. Maybe I will use my laser pointer. Hope you you can see this pink color point, which is there in the box. Uh, no, sir. Maybe it's it's my fault from my yes, end. Sir, I can see. I can see the pointer. Thank you. You can see the pointer on the yes, slide, right? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, I'll I'll rejoin. Okay. Maybe you can just uh, rejoin, and if it's still not working, maybe I can uh, do something. Yeah. 
thank you so the i was talking about uh, this specific ping point which is uh, the data point for john so now how uh, what internally lime does is first it zooms in and selects the specific area where we are interested so i was talking about having uh, uh, lime is nothing but local uh, it will give you local explanation which means to the specific data point right so here you can see first we can uh, internally it will select the area where you uh, showed the interest so which is of john's point and that specific area it does a process called as perturbation perturbation means it will try to create a few more data points suppose you can see these two were the only original data points right the blue one uh the violet one was the original data point and the pink one was john's data point it created a few more data points around them in the white region and again it is also creating a few more data points on the other region so with this what it will do it will weigh the new samples and according to their proximity to the uh, area of interest it will train a simpler model so if if th these are the data points with which we will have to train our model then it will be very very easy right because here there is a uh, a simpler uh, line of best fit right which is almost linearly separating uh, both the uh, sides so with this it will actually train a simpler model this is what we call it call it as surrogate model so i was talking about one of the classifications like surrogate models right so this is a simpler linear surrogate model and with this model it will be giving you the interpretation now it is very very easy because you can tell if the point is uh, uh, considering this as the line of best fit whatever the point falls to the left of the best fit line or uh, preferably uh, people with stroke and on the right is people with no stroke okay so Uh, so this is how it works and with this we can now we'll be able to clearly tell uh, and interpret and tell this is how the model has given us the predictions so i will i'll i'll maybe explain uh, give you an example of how uh, the lime is gi giving us the uh, um, interpretation okay so for this i'm just using a, a simple example uh, which is a uh, Uh, diabetes uh, data set probably most of you would have used uh, during some of uh, maybe your semesters or whatever so uh, here we are having around nine different features and 768 uh, records and uh, here uh, the, uh, the uh, variable that we are going to uh, predict is whether uh, the patient uh, or whether the person has diabetes or no diabetes so it is a very simple binary classification problem so i i am trying to understand or explain one specific data point which it actually predicted as diabetes so if i look at the confidence level with which it has predicted it is predicting that uh, 0.73 or this is nothing but your prob probability probability as well so it is 73 percentage confident that this specific person is having diabetes and uh, on the contrary um, so your uh, since this is a binary binary classification problem the remaining probability of 27 percentage is goes to no diabetes so now if we are trying to explain uh, if we ask the model or if we explain if we ask lime why your 73 percentage confident that this particular patient uh, person is having diabetes then these are the nine features i was talking about so it is giving me such a graph here so these are the features that are contributing to the 73 percentage confidence level and these are the features that uh, it is on the contrary which tells that it is no diabetics so here if you look at it is telling the glucose level is greater than 99 that is one of the strong point and the second is the blood pressure is above 70 the skin thickness is either uh, greater than or equal to 0 and insulin is again uh, uh, maybe uh, equal to or uh, lesser than 0 
So these are the data points based on which it is concluding that this particular person is having diabetics. Also, there are some contrary beliefs, but these data points are having higher weightage and you can also look at the actual feature values for those specific for that specific data point. So as I say, glucose, if the glucose is greater than 99, actually the patient is having glucose level of 104, blood pressure, anything above 70, the patient is having uh, 72 blood pressure, skin thickness is zero, insulin level is zero. So based, based on all these data points, the model is concluding 73% on based on 73 percentage confidence level, I am concluding that this specific person is actually having diabetes. So this can be very easily applicable to John as well. So if we do such explanations, we can also tell these are the factors based on which I am telling that this person is having a higher probability that he could be diabetic. So this can be applicable to any uh, such scenarios. Uh, so hope this was clear uh, before I move on to the other uh, Shapley method. Yes, sir, clear. Yeah, thank you, Rizan. Okay. So now uh, let me move on to the uh, next uh, uh, specific method called Lime. Uh, sorry called SHAP. So SHAP is nothing but shapely additive explanations. So uh, again, this, uh, this method is also a model agnostic efficient algorithm and which calculates feature importance uh, based on a model output. And uh, uh, again, uh, here, this algorithm can also give you global explanation and very recently with the recent evolutions, it is also possible to give local explanations. So in Lime, we only saw local explanations. It will not be able to give global explanations. I'll be able to come in a, uh, in a few minutes, what is global explanation and we'll be able to give you an uh, example. So one important point uh, to be noted here is how the shape was founded and from where it came from. So it came from a concept called as cooperative game theory. I'll be able to explain what it is in the upcoming slides. Okay, so uh, let us take a simple example of uh, what it is. What does mean by cooperative game theory? <coughs> so let us consider one simple example. Uh, just give me a, a few seconds, please. Okay, sorry. So let us take a simple example. Say there are four people who are playing a game. It, it is not an individual game. It could be multiple games. Suppose consider it is a basketball or uh, be it any game. So there are, diff uh, there are four people who represents the game and there will be different sets of people who will be uh, playing uh, different sets of games. And finally, there is a payout of around ten thousand dollars that has to be distributed among them. So, if I distribute two thousand five hundred dollars each based on their performances or based on equality, do you guys think that it would be a fair amount of distribution to them? No. Yeah. Right. Because everyone's contribution to the game would be different. Th their performances would be different, right? So that is why we have like man of the match, man of the series. Again, uh, uh, I'm not a cricket fanatic, but still I'm giving you that example. So based on the performance, we should be rewarding um, the different players, right? That would be much more fair. So that is where this uh, specific theory comes in. So for example, if I would like to... Um, a reward a specific player, I will have to calculate something like his individual contribution and how was his contribution along with others. So uh, don't go into, uh, I'm not going into the equation, etc. So let me try to explain 
the concept in a simpler manner so this case individual contribution can be calculated in different ways one can be what was his what was the output when this specific guy played the game and if i discount this particular person's contribution how how would be the how would be the game's uh, uh, conclusion without this guy uh, maybe we can also calculate this maybe this person would have not played a few games uh, at that particular time how was the game's conclusion so that is how uh, in a very simpler manner but there are other methods as i uh, told so here you can uh, contributed with subsets of two with the other uh, three players how he has contributed with subsets of three how he has contributed with subsets of four which is all together how he has contributed so there are different subsets so you'll have to calculate all how many uh, permutations and combination in terms of subset how he can contribute and average it out so this is uh, this is how the uh, uh, cooperative game theory works and with this formula in place you will have to calculate for each of this specific uh, person and then finally you will have to do the payout so now with this you can actually tell this is how this specific specific player has contributed this is how this second player has contributed and finally you can make um, uh, the uh, payout distributed so if you have understood this specific concept exactly based on this specific concept the shapley algorithm will evaluate mo your model and it will tell these these specific features are more important to me and this uh, the uh, and these are the specific features uh, of the model which are of less importance to me with that in place you can actually take decision whether i can maybe remove the less um, contributing features in your model and you can tell these are the important features now with this context in place i will show you one example let us take a data set okay so this is again a very famous data set a wine quality data set i'm not sure uh, i i believe that most of you would have used at some point of the other so here uh, you have around 12 different features and uh, there are around 6500 observations or uh, uh, rows and for each row you have a quality score of 1 to 10 again they are converting this as a binary classification problem because whatever score is there from 0 to 5 they are uh, telling the grade of the wine is 0 uh, or of uh, a low quality or if uh, the score is uh, between 6 to 10 the um, uh, they classify it as 1 which is of good quality so even before explanation we already have a few a few uh, interpretations that we can make even with the xg boost where we can understand the feature importance so this is a very simple explanation based on xg boost interpretation which are all the important features so here you are actually getting sulfur dioxide as the most important feature followed by density chloride etc but this will not tell which is important to classify whether it is zero or one maybe it may not be very clear at this point of time i'll come back to this once i show how shapely actually predicts so this is how my shapely is giving a global explanation so this is what i was referring to global explanation the shapely gives alcohol percentage as the most important feature followed by volatile acidity density etc whereas in xc boost the alcohol percentage was as good as the last feature it was just last but one this is because any tree attribution method beat your ensemble method or beat your decision tree it always gives very less importance for uh, uh, those which are away from the root whereas shape calculates how those individual features are um, uh, how those individual features are contributing to the model importance in a different manner based on the game uh, theory what we saw so again so on a simple thing again 
suppose let us take one specific local explanation okay in this explanation it is telling uh, your wineness of one uh, quality i mean uh, of good quality so it here you can see on what basis it is trying to tell this is of good quality or of uh, uh, category 1 you can it is clearly telling free sulfur dioxide this particular feature had a value of 15 fixed acid acid acidity had this value this value etc and it is trying to push this to a uh, to the positive side whereas the uh, uh, on the negative direction these are the features it is trying to push to the lower side the sulfates had uh, these value volatile uh, acidity had this value alcohol content was less so uh, these are the uh, uh, contrary side so with these specific features in place you can tell this is why it is concluding that my wine is of a better quality so the, the, this plot we call it as a force plot which quantifies and tells what are all the uh, things it is actually trying to um uh, uh, factors which are actually trying to push on the positive side and what are all the factors which are trying to push on the negative side so here there is one particular value called as base value which calculates if the if the actual value is greater than the base value it is on the positive side here the base value is 0.64 and the actual output value value was 1.86 that is why it is concluding that this wine is of a better quality in case if it if the uh, output value was lesser than the base value it would have been the other way i will also show one example where it is showing the ba- uh, output value is minus 4.34 so here you can see base value was 0.64 here you have more attributes which are pointing that these attributes were having values such that these are pointing to the wine or wine is having a very l- lesser value except this one value so the weightages of these particular features are more here which is leading to the prediction being on the negative side which is of bad l- wine quality so hope i was clear on this explanation uh, also i will i will show you quite a few more examples of both sh- uh, shape and line directly on the notebooks with a few more examples uh, so uh, can i hear some responses was it clear or not clear if it's not clear yes, maybe it's clear. Yes, clear. Clear, clear. clear 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 sir very clear thank you guys okay so shape also have one feature called as shape summary plots because here whatever we saw this explanation was for a single point we are talking we are taking picking up one single prediction one specific data point that is why i have been telling this is a local explanation and it was trying to give this is uh, uh, this is why it has predicted for that specific data point and i told this is a global explanation there is one more representation called as shape summary plots here you can see uh, there are multiple data points against each of these features and how each feature is behaving against your prediction so this is the feature value for high means the wine quality is good it will uh, tell that it will indicate in red color and if the wine quality is low it will indicate in blue color so now with this context in place if alcohol quality is less it will be uh, the overall uh, wine quality will be bad if the alcohol quality is uh, red then your overall output will be on the higher side which is wine quality will be good similarly a similar way you can look for each features so uh, volatile acidity is exactly the opposite of alcohol here you can see if volatile acidity is less then your wine quality would be good and volatile acidity is actually high your wine quality will be bad so this is a consolidation of various data points this is nothing but there are multiple points present in each of these plots which is giving a, a sense of how 
each feature will behave with respect to the output variable. Okay, so uh, I'll not explain this plot. I've taken a, a not a very good example, so I, I'll just skip this. Uh, later you can see. Um, so uh, if things are uh, clear, um, I can show you much more examples directly on my uh, Jupyter notebooks, both for uh, SHAP and LINE. Uh, is there any questions before I move on to examples, uh, guys? I'd be happy to answer. Does SHAP no. use sampling? Yes, please. Does SHAP use sampling, sir? Sampling. Uh, it is not exactly sampling. See, in SHAP, uh, that is what I explained to you, right? It is either a global explanation or a local explanation. Um, for global explanation, it considers all the data points within the model, right? Because it, it uh, sorry, my screen is stuck. Let me go back to this. So here, this explanation is for the complete model, right? And this, this local explanations were for specific data points of your predictions. So uh, it is not exactly sampling. Uh, maybe you can actually, um, for Lime, you can call it sampling. I am, I'm not sure I'm right. I'm, I'm just figuring, figuring that out. Lime, you can tell it is sampling because you are, uh, you are, if you are trying to interpret uh, the prediction for one particular point, it creates a few samples around that specific data points, and then it tries to create a simpler model. Uh, but it is not specifically sampling for layer uh, for shape. Mm, thank you, sir. Did, uh, did I answer your query? Yes, sir. One small question. How computation intensive is shape? because it is computing for all points. Uh, see, uh, th that is what I'm telling. Uh, 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 so it, 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 it calculates, see, it calculates based on all the points, right? See, um, uh, I'll just give you, I will just equate this example to what we saw as a wine quality data set. So what did we do? Here, there are four, uh, suppose say, uh, again here, um, you are trying to divide the payout uh, to four different persons, etc. So there you are actually trying to do a prediction in terms of um, whether the wine quality was good or bad, and how for that wine quality to decide which and all features are important. So here, for which person, how much I'll have to pay, that is what is uh, coming as uh, the factor, right? There it is like. Um, for um, uh, uh, for a wine quality to be good or bad, which factors are important? Or if you take an individual data point, how um, uh, on what basis it has actually uh, decided that this specific data point is uh, a good quality wine or not? So if, if you remember, uh, I, I, if you had uh, closely observed how a decision tree works, Decision tree has excellent explanations, right? Because you'll have a um, uh, you, you'll have a decision. It tries to for, uh, create a logic based on the specific logic. It tries to bring in homogeneity. Yes, and, sir. You can get uh, uh, right? yeah. So basically, that is how exactly here it uh, does as well, right? Uh, in terms of it, it, it tells because of these these factors. I am concluding this is what is your observation. Okay, sir. Thank you. So apart, uh, uh, maybe based on my experience, apart from decision tree, it will be very difficult to explain any model. Decision tree is one algorithm where you can actually take a printout and paste it in the line and tell with the help of that decision tree, you can actually explain the client art. And this is how it has concluded like this, right? So apart from that, uh, that, that is the very reason I was showing you this, right? I mean, a decision tree may be a simple model. Uh, again, if you ensemble a decision tree, uh, then it becomes a complicated model. So uh, a simple model can be interpretable. One example that can be a decision, decision tree. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rissa. So uh, 
maybe i we have only 10 minutes i will show you examples and then post that we can take questions first let me show some examples for line i will show you multiple examples which includes textual data image data and tabular data as well so uh, this is one um, classification problem again uh, based on nlp where you have two different categories one is atheism and one is non atheism so it is mentioned as christian here um, so atheism or christian so with this data set they have just uh, um, extracted features using tf idf vector racer and finally they are doing predictions okay so let us not go into all those steps so here let us take so this is again an example of lime so i am again reminding you this would be only local explanation so let us take one specific example and for that example it has given uh, the class it has predicted the class as atheism and for atheism the probability it is giving is 0.57 why i am telling it is 0.57 because the opposite probability for christian is 0.43 So one minus point four three would be point five five six or point five seven for this. So, if you look at this, these are all the different words that was present in the sentence. I, I mean, it is not all the words. So it is telling words like posting, host, NNTB, edu, have, etc. These are all words which. are pushing this model towards pushing this prediction towards atheism and one word which is university it is trying to push towards christianity so this is how the explanation is for that specific data point <coughs> so this is what uh, what i was start talking about so 0.56 is the probability for atheism so clearly if someone asks so why the specific sentence it is based on this specific sentence it is telling um, it is atheism i can tell there are no enough words which belong to <coughs> the other class these words these words point to atheism so this has nothing to do with the religion uh, religions right these words <coughs> so that is the reason you can simply show this and explain this is why it has actually um, done such a uh, such a prediction so uh, was it clear here guys before i uh, move to the other examples with the contribution we understood sir uh, sorry contribution is correct sir i understood yeah thank you okay so uh, one more example with line uh, so this is a very this is a very uh, simple data set i think uh, every one of us so when learning data science would have used this uh, the most famous iris data set so here you have uh, uh, it is a multi class uh, uh, classification uh, into three categories so here the prediction is the flower is setosa and based on what it is uh, telling whether it is setosa or not it is clearly telling the petal width was actually lesser than or uh, Uh, petal width was greater than 0.3 and petal length was greater than uh, sorry uh, yes uh, was uh, lesser than or equal to 1.6 the actual values you can see so with this criteria it has clearly told that this will only be setosa and it is 100 percentage confident you can see the confidence level it is 100 percentage and zero for the other two classes so this kind yeah. of uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so this kind of classification wow. you can actually only see in this uh, yeah, so can i request yendra kavala neenga sorry i think it is hari krishna is it possible to go on mute in, unless if you are not asking a question yendi yendi tv adikiva we should not it is us undanda i got we phone ni kalichu so body Okay, so is this example clear, guys? Yeah. So, sir, you can unmute them. You can unmute them. They don't have any knowledge like. You can unmute them. You can unmute them. Let me see if I have an option to unmute. Yes, sir. Please. Mute them. Okay. Sorry. 
successfully i'm able to do sorry guys okay so quickly i can show you maybe one more example as well so this is one more example uh, wherein uh, we are trying to predict the salary based on a few features whether the salary is greater than or equal to 50k or greater than 50k so this prediction it is giving based on see uh, again this is 100 percentage confidence level it is predicting so it is telling he has some kind of capital gain his marital status is married he is telling his educational number is greater than 12 hours per week he is spending is greater than 45 hours of work and he is in some relationship is true so these are the actual values it matches whatever criteria it has so it is clearly classifying this is um, greater than 50k on the contra contrary uh, one more example it is able to tell it is lesser than or equal to 50k because of all these features and the values so these are a few examples for lime i will show you a few examples for sharp as well yes so a quick example on sharp um, so here you can see uh, this is a, a IMDB movie review data set, again, a very frequently used data set. So here you can see, uh, again, uh, let us, uh, we are trying to do one local explanation for one particular value. So one particular data point, it has actually predicted as positive. And on what basis did it predict as positive? We are using a force plot. So here you can see these, these uh, words in red are trying to push the value greater than base value to the positive side. So you can read them as well. So the sign of a good movie is that it can tie with our emotions. This one exactly did that. So he's giving a very good positive thing. Uh, he's explaining one trait of a positive uh, emotion and telling this, uh, connecting this movie to that. And also he's telling the entire theater was sold out. I was overcome with laughter. So this again is positive. So these are positive things. It exactly highlights within a sentence and also it highlights negative. So since the number of positive things are exceeding um, are pushing the thing towards the uh, positive review, this has been overall classified as a positive uh, review. So similarly, we can have other examples as well. Uh, I will quickly show you one example with image. Uh, uh, this is quite an interesting thing. See, this is again one data set where we are trying to classify images. Well, they have used ResNet 50 pre-trained model for this. So we are taking a couple of example, uh, two data points, again, in a local explanation data point. So here you can actually see this particular image, it is actually um, predicting as an American egret bird, followed by the next uh, level as uh, crane, blue heron, flamingo, etc. And similarly, this image, it is classifying as speedboat has the highest probability. If you would like to understand on what basis did this particular image get predicted as American egret, here you can see. Red is the highest shapely value on the positive side. The features on the neck, it is considering this to be an American egret. Probably uh, the neck could be of a different uh, shape for the other birds. And this to be a speedboat, you can see it is identifying some areas of the speedboat to conclude that this is a speedboat. Probably it is also identifying a person uh, which it is using uh, to give this prediction, which, which may be wrong. But that is how it is actually uh, learned that this has a this is a speedboat. So you can actually do a lot of predictions for images because you can actually pinpoint on which specific area of the image it has actually learned and it is guessing based on what it is actually predicting to that specific class. So this is one example for image. So these are the examples I have. So uh, the, the, these are the contents I had for this uh, specific session.
So if there are some specific questions I can answer, or you can also put it in chat, I'll try to answer later. So any questions before we wind up, uh, gentlemen? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, thanks, Adish. Okay, for no questions, uh, which well, there are some questions in chat. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So I'm just noticing uh, them. Okay, is this using uh, CNN? No, 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 I told you, right? Uh, it is a ResNet uh, V2. Yeah, the same answer for you as well, uh, Reba. Uh, it will be possible to share the notebook link. Uh, uh, so I can uh, share it to the organizing committee. I'm, I'm not sure how they can share it to you. Or if, if there's a way available to share it here in this chat, I will do that uh, once the call is over. So that's it from my end, uh, Jayshree and uh, the organizing team. Uh, so over to you. Uh, thank you, Lalit Kumar. This is Jayshree. Yes, Jayshree. Yes, thank you so much for the session. Yeah, Bye. thanks everyone for joining. Uh, thanks, uh, Lalit. Yeah. Thank you, team. Okay. Thank you, team.